What's going on YouTube? I'm Scotch. I'm Sniff. And we're Scotch and Sniff. And today we're going to be uh, tasting. A live, live tasting. Live extravaganza. You think we have like a banner across the screen right now that says that? That'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. Make it happen. <laughs> so, so today we're going to be tasting the Cavalan uh, Solus Vino Brique. I bought this bottle at a local liquor store where my local liquor guy, apparently somebody else had ordered two bottles of these. I'm probably gonna grab the other one. But uh, somebody had ordered two bottles of these and then stiffed my local liquor store. And the guy was like, hey, do you want one of these? Because the guy bailed on me and he doesn't want them. Lucky me, I spent, I'm not gonna say how much, $250 on this bottle. And I thought I would try to, oh, oh hold on, wait, no. Uh, go ahead and pour yourself some and talk about it for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I haven't had this. Uh, I've had other Catalans before and they are delicious. We have had the um, the concert, and that one's pretty good. The green bottle, Art Deco, looks really pretty. Um, great flavors, but this this Vino Break is brand new to me. Should should be like one of the, uh, I guess, is it the best whiskey, what did it win? It won uh, World's Best Single Malt Whiskey. There you go. What a beautiful package. So that's the thing, that's why I had to bring it. I totally forgot. So this container, you push two buttons here, and the leather wrapped packaging, opens up to this. Well, and then you get a scroll. You get a scroll, which is a little certificate that tells you about it, and a whole lot of information in here, and this beautiful, beautiful case. Makes $250 <laughs> way worth it. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't make it worth 250 bucks, but this actual juice in the bottle, I can see why it got World Whiskey of the Year. So I was telling my brother, and here, here's probably a really familiar, wow, already. Here's probably a really familiar feeling you get. You go out, you buy a bottle, everybody's like, oh my gosh, this bottle's amazing. You buy it, and then you put it in the glass, and you smell it, and you're trying to figure out everything that's in it, and it just, it smells amazing. Then you taste it, and you're like, there's too much going on, I can't figure this out. And then you're done with it, then you drink some more, and then it's this vicious cycle of just tasting it over and over and over again, and you're still trying to get the flavors out of it, but it's so complex, you end up with this. And so I believe, this was finished in like a ton of wine casks, like a bunch of different red wine casks. Ooh. And that's very apparent off the nose. It's just, it's rich from red fruit. There's a ton of wine flavors. It's, it's already ridiculously complex. And so, any sherry? Uh, let's go take a look at the It doesn't say anything about the barrels, which can, oh, there we go. Slow grown white oak, which is air season for two years after soaking this one of world's best wines. Um, I wonder what those world's best wines they're talking about. That's a good question because the flavors that come across in this just seem to be like all over the place. And there's no, I mean, so this to me was one of the first whiskeys that I've ever sat down and tried to taste where I immediately texted my brother and I was like, hey, I need you to try this because you have no idea. Like I'm trying to sit here and get all the flavors out of it. And I mean, I've read the flavors that they say they find in it. Like, Kiwi, like mango, like delicate blend of vanilla, caramel, and sugars. Um, and then the palate, they even write the same thing that I feel already. The taste ends with clean and complex flavors embodying all that is the best in finest malt whiskeys, which is literally the most vague statement of all time. But this is still coming from the same bottle that on the back says ingredient malted barley. It says bottling date on the bottle, like alcohol content on the front label. So they're not trying to help you out at all when it comes to the flavors. But the nose, absolutely incredible. The nose is incredible, and I, I just took a, a sip, and <clears throat> it's just, it is packed with flavor. Uh, Sniff actually told me to try it before filming because I'd be, I, I wouldn't have the words to say. And honestly, I don't have the words to say. It's so rich with, with different wine flavors, but not the winey characteristics. It's, it's pure dislike. I asked him if it had sherry in it before. It's because it's so rich tasting it, so rich smelling it. It, it smells smell like full of spices and, and the, the, the... Every time I breathe out, there's another flavor that I just want to stop and be like, oh, there's like Pinot or, or some kind of like Barolo, some wine flavor that I've tasted before, um, you know, yeah, it's crazy. I told you that actually is, it's blowing my mind. Yeah, this is, I mean, we've bought world, you know, whiskeys of the year before, and we've been like, mm, like Booker's Dry, like to talk about that for the 10,000th time. Like, it's okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't hold a candle to the level of complexity that you get from a bottle like this. This is just on another, like right now I'm tasting Marzipan. 
I'm tasting um, vanilla, I'm tasting a little bit of toffee, and I'm tasting on top of all that, it does taste like there's sherry in it, even though it's not sherry. It's, I mean, maybe sherry is one of the wines they put in there, and maybe they put one of the finest sherries that there is out there. That, I mean, that sherry's pretty cheap to dry. And look how dark and rich it is. Seriously. I mean, it's a beautiful, wow. <clears throat> These flavors, with, with air are just like, it's surprising how, how, how good it is, surprising how fruity it is. And you're like, you're right with marzipan, almondy flavors. So I'm, maybe they are saying these, you know, world-class wines like sherry and, and the alcohol is just drawing more and more <laughs> saliva out of my mouth. I'm just like spitting all over the place, but it is so good. And it, it, it is so rich. Yep. Yeah, this deserves a title like that. Yeah, sure. yeah, as opposed to the design, which is not correct. <laughs> but, like, but, but seriously, I mean, that's how it's just like the Crown Royal Northern Harvest. It's just like the Booker's Drive. You can't always trust the reviews and what people say. Like when it comes to awards like that, you know, how hard is it to say that this is the world's best single whiskey? But honestly, when you have a collection of, I mean, between the two of us, over 350 whiskeys at home that are all open and that we drink you know, to make sure that we can do reviews so that you guys can be aware of what's inside of there so we can save you some money and all that stuff. But this, it's rare that you come across one when you sit down and you're just literally without all the words you need to describe everything that's inside of it because it's so complex. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've talked about the Hibiki 21 before and all of its layers, but those you can almost sit sit down and like dissect each of the layers. Yeah. This is if you took all the layers, smashed them together in like a 20 ton press and then told somebody like, figure this out. Yeah. It's just so much more complex. I mean, it's like if you took <laughs> a bunch of different blends of wines and smashed them together in a press and then got one juice from there. Just like what he was saying about the Hibiki 21, you can go through, have a long night and write down everything and really kind of think it through. This right here is blowing my mind. Like anything that I had in there that was able to process words and, and descriptions from physical stimuli, it's gone. <laughs> It's gone, but I just know that it, it's super delicious, super rich and spicy, and like uh, you're getting all the good from whatever these world-class wines are talking about, and I really can't find a fault in it at all. <laughs> so yeah, so um, I guess in looking for more things like this, what's the last whiskey you had that just completely blew your mind? Because we definitely want to find the next whiskey that is going to make us sit down and do this. And I mean, maybe maybe it will be world class. Maybe it will win, you know, single malt of the year. Maybe it'll be that. But right now, this is wow. this is amazing. And I mean, for the price, you said two fifty. This is worth two fifty. Hibiki oh, Hibiki twenty one, man. Hibiki twenty one, which I'm always buying, is four twenty five at my local. And I pick that up. I would pick this up over Hibiki twenty one. I think right now, at least. Definitely. Wow. That's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm definitely gonna buy the other bottle. <laughs> It's so good. Have you tried this one? If you have, comment down below. If you haven't, comment down below. Let us know what we're missing if you have tried it. What you'd like to hear from us if you haven't tried it. If you drink whiskey, comment down below. If you drink non-whiskey, comment down below. If you like rum, if you, comment down below. If you breathe air, oh my gosh. comment down if below. If you like rum, because oh, we're going to be doing some rum reviews, because there's so much good rum out there. Oh, That's complex like whiskey, but not this complex. This is on another level, but yeah. You read it, comment. If you watch YouTube, if you watch YouTube, we know you're watching and comment down below. Because you're watching us right now.